how did I get into 14? Mm -hmm. I got into 14 uh, late 2020, mm -hmm. and the thing to do during COVID was to stay home and not do any go anywhere else. So I wanted to do something more meaningful. I, I did content creation before on MMO, and then I wanted to rebrand myself and just kind of start from new. And I was like, well, why not do it 14 or something and try that? And 14 is actually a backup plan. I didn't anticipate actually going hard into 14, but well. I kind of did because like, as we all know, if you do reaction videos, you get a lot of views and anticipation <laughs> for your content. So right. like, well, there's something here. And I decided to stick with 14. Uh, I, and I liked the game. It was slow, obviously, for me at first, but everything kind of ramped up as you kept going through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I got to 14. You know, I, I, I hate to say it, but like 14 like viewers, they always act like, Man, I hate this drama content and stuff, but <laughs> you guys eat this shit up. Yep. You guys love it. Yeah, it, true. It's, they break it to you guys, but you guys watch it. <laughs> I, I, and people want to sit there and be like, Ko, you can't even like make a non-drama video. I do, <laughs> but you guys don't watch it. You guys don't watch it. I've seen so many fortune creators that uh -huh. make amazing videos, like editing styles on the same level of pint, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But these guys, people don't, they don't tune into that stuff. They just want to watch whatever Xenos is crying about or Xenos and Xenos or Zeppelin. And I'm not trying to say like, you know, oh, like they're crying about stuff all the time. But like mm -hmm. people just like to see drama. They want to see mm -hmm. drama all the time. And that's the thing about 14 content that really sucks. If you're not Pint or Joe Cat making videos, it's hard for you to grow and it just sucks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chocobo Radio episode number 19. Today we have a very, very special guest. We have a legend on stream today. Mr. Ko, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell the people who you are. Hey guys, my name is Kogan. I'm just a 14 YouTuber at the moment, trying to branch into other things soon, but I call myself a legend, man. I'm just pretty much just a... <laughs> Just a dude making videos, but I appreciate the compliments. Yeah. How are you doing, Apaka? I am. You know, I'm. I'm doing great. This is. Uh, this has been. A, this has been an episode that I've been thinking about since I pretty much started my podcast. So I. I got to say thank <laughs> you. Thank you for being here. And um, you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff today. We have patch 6.5, which has just dropped this past week. I got to. I got to ask you, Co. Um, how have you? What do you think about 6.5 so far? Um, so f I think it's been not too bad. I know a lot of people spammed everything within the first day of release and was like, <laughs> uh, uh, like uh, already done with everything. Yeah. And I've taken my time. First day it came out, the first like it was a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I spent that time just playing PvP the whole time, and mm -hmm. I didn't actually touch anything because uh, the new hot in the uh, battle pass. And then after that, I pretty much spent that time to just pretty much kill time and doing PvP until Wednesday I did the MSQ on stream. And after that, uh, I just haven't done anything else. I haven't done the Alliance raid. I don't know what else came out during this, like the three big things in my opinion, but yeah. for the most part, I uh, haven't done the Alliance raid yet. I usually plan like a creator Alliance raid thing, but this time around time escaped me and it totally snuck up on me that we were, we're getting 6.5 now. So I didn't mm -hmm. set that up at all. So uh, I usually save a lot of content on stream, but I was too earlier this time around so I can, um, pretty much uh, do it, do the extreme with my raid group, and we were able to clear the extreme thir uh, Thursday night, yeah, so. Mm. Overall, I think, I don't really have too much to say. It sucks because, like, I actually haven't done everything yet. Yeah. But for the most part, pretty fun, I would say. It's the same old, like, whenever there's a new patch drop, I'm always just kind of like, oh, some cool new things, and then I just kind of, like, play a little <laughs> bit of it and then just kind of move on. Is that kind of how you feel as well, or...? Yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I love MSQ, and I think for mm -hmm. me, MSQ is pretty much the thing that I always have to do very first on. And then after yeah. that, I go into the raid, and I gotta be honest, if for and I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't done 6.5 yet, <laughs> but... Um, I think this is a really good patch. You know, I, I on Twitter, I basically good. said my MSQ review is 9 out of 10 and the Alliance raid is 10 out of 10 because this Alliance yeah. raid, <laughs> man, they they really knocked it out of the park. I think Soken when he just went crazy with the music this time around. And um, it's really given me a lot of hope for Dontro because if this is the content that they're putting out for Endwalker, man, yeah. 7.0 is going to be insane it's gonna be good yeah that's good yeah my sister she actually played the the alliance right earlier and i would mm -hmm. walk by her room and see her doing a bit of it and yeah. she said she was it was she was having a lot of fun i know like a lot of criticism mm -hmm. came from like how it like the alliance too easy and like mm -hmm. aesthetically it's good but the difficulty it was like pretty easy it's yeah. nothing like 
evilists or anything. And I don't know. To me, I think alliance raids are not meant to be hard. They're just right. meant to be kind of like, like you know, just a general like, oh, this is just like a new thing we're doing where you can involve all mm -hmm. people playing with you. Like, I, I remember even doing the near one, and that was, like, difficult. People said, like, nothing's been hard ever since, like, Eclipse, right. but the near one was kind of difficult at times, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've always really felt that the Alliance raid was kind of like a, not like a Transformers movie, kind of like a, a Fast and the Furious <laughs> movie, like a, a, a summer blockbuster uh, where it's just, you, you're just going to go crazy, and you're going to see a lot of crazy shit, and, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun. And that's pretty much yeah. how I've always seen it. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's like a quick little, like cool like if it's your first time doing it and i think the best time to do it was like when it's like so many people are doing a block of mechanics going on mm -hmm. and it's just like a great thing to do to experience when you're new but after that like the funness i guess wears off when people realize like, it's not that difficult thing to do <laughs> and, uh, i'll even i'll admit it's not that hard obviously but right i don't know what people really want nowadays people just want content that just makes people struggle i guess but Alliance Raider most are mostly meant to be like super like casual friendly, you know, like nothing yeah. too crazy. So, right. Not, I don't know what people expect from it sometimes. <laughs> That's true. So I, I and I, I am curious. Um, you know, when it comes to a new patch, when it comes to a new update, what yeah. do you look forward to the most? Is it the MSQ? Is it the new glands? Is it new PvP stuff? Like, what what is it that you are logging in for? Yeah, I would say for me. Oddly enough, I think the new PvP stuff kind of ties in with Glam too. As yeah. you can see, I'm wearing the new Glam stuff and it looks really nice. It looks sick, yeah. But I enjoy PvP a lot. If the PvP battle pass is really enticing, I will spam it and do it. But after I get my rewards, I kind of stop playing it. Mm. But MSQ, like, if it's if there's like no big PvP update, mm. I would most likely just do MSQ and just call it a day there because I just really like doing MSQ for the story and like seeing what's going to happen next. Yeah. Uh, the story this time around has been not too bad. It's like kind of just filler until the next expansion. So it's kind of like, <laughs> it is what it is, you know? Like, yeah. I hate to admit it. It's not like mind blowing, like 5.3 or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think it was like overall not too bad, but I just like seeing it anyways. I like seeing the, the new dungeon right. alone was actually really an Oh, bro. that was mm. crazy cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. when, when you're just okay. running through the, uh, yeah, through the town. Oh, man. Y yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can spoil it too much. But yeah, <laughs> just going through that alone was already good. Like, of yeah. course, the boss wasn't that hard. But like overall, mm -hmm. everything else was like aesthetically, it was really, really good. It's really because when I was streaming it on my stream, um, yeah. when we got to the second area of the dungeon, my stream just died because of all the effects going on. Oh, wow. yeah. And it was like, uh, it was like uh, chugging really hard. I think that's the word, but like basically mm -hmm. all the frames was dying on stream. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> they're really pushing the limitations of, and it's really affecting me on my stream now. <laughs> and it shows. But, yeah. Uh, I'd say, like, the MSQ is always great. I like the MSQ. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, in other news, we have FanFest London, which starts yeah. on October 21st. And I'm, I'm just curious, um, what do you think is going to be teased? Because, you know, we have Femme Rothgar kind of up in the air. We have the new <laughs> job kind of up in the air. Um, do you think we're going to get a new trailer? I think they're saving that for Japan, personally. But what, what do you think? I think we might get, like, a job reveal. I think... Mm eased it hard enough at the last one they're like okay we will drop one job at this one and at the japan one they're gonna drop the next job that's kind of how they did it with the i think that's how they did it right mm -hmm. they dropped sage at some point and then they dropped reaper later during yeah. fan fest in the summer of 2021 i believe something mm -hmm. but um yeah I, i'm expecting like i don't i don't not expect like a huge trailer but like maybe like a next like look at the next job uh, maybe it will be whatever people are anticipating. Like people are thinking it's gonna be Corsair or something. I don't want to be Corsair. Yeah. I want something completely different. But <laughs> what, what's other wrong than with that, Corsair? I think I want to be surprised, completely mm. surprised. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like when Sage just dropped, everyone was like, "What the hell is Sage?" Because they never <laughs> did Sage the way they did in this like uh, Final Fantasy history before. They yeah. did it with like you know the new lift machine flying thing and shooting people that was really cool compared mm. to like you know previously where it was like oh just um like a sage would be like an old mage or something so mm -hmm. i want to be completely surprised that's what i want to see i don't want to see like oh yeah corsair pirate we knew that was coming i want to be like <laughs> oh shit that wasn't corsair that was yeah. actually or something so that's that's what i want to see i like being surprised more than anything else so. that's fair um, yeah yeah my... Uh, but other than that, um, I'm pretty much just like chilling. I'm just gonna. I don't really have high expectations. I'm just gonna be like, oh crap, so they're gonna drop this new thing. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and just wait for it to come. Yeah, I, I I have faith in the devs, and I think everyone's gonna be pretty fa fairly happy when it comes out. Um, but you know, only time will tell. And we have Fan Fest London, like I said, coming in October. And I think Tokyo Fan Fest was what in January, like early January. Uh... 
I want to say, it, it, I want to hope it is because yeah. I have to wait so long for more information. I just want to like have stuff just come out <laughs> immediately because I just want to see new stuff already and just be like hyped. Because even after right. like, I went to NA Fan Fest and I was already mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, it was it was so okay. It wasn't the best con ever, but like it was still <laughs> nice to be around, you know. I, was, yeah. I enjoyed it. As, I guess as I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, overall, I just I, I think it's gonna come in January, and I hope it does. So we just get all the new information and be ready for Dawn Trail because I'm really excited for Dawn Trail already. Yeah, was was uh, was Vegas your first uh, fan fest, or have you been to other ones in the past? It's my first one ever. Yeah, oh, me too. Playing the game in late 2020, so mm -hmm. like uh, I think Shadowbringers already happened, and mm -hmm. obviously like I mean I guess you can count and Walker fan fest. But that was online, so that one doesn't really count. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I, I pretty much um, I, I had a fun time at that. That was my first time ever going to any con. Oh. And I had my my first time ever going to Vegas as well. So it was oh. like a lot of first time. Wait, so yeah. what did you think of Vegas? Because so for people who don't know, I I live in California, so I go to Vegas. Oh, yeah. You know, every once in a while. Um, it's 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 a it's not that hard of a drive. But what did you think of Vegas being there for the first time? Yeah, I think uh, Vegas was stupidly hot. I, don't really <laughs> I hate I hate hot weather. Yeah. I'm a fan of cold weather. I like like jacket weather and stuff. So I'm glad it's getting mm -hmm. colder over here now. But yes. uh, Vegas, it was it was not too bad. I think mm, outside of Fan Fest was like going to eat at places, mm -hmm. stupidly expensive places. But like I think I really enjoyed like going to uh, what do you call that? Um, there was like a buffet called bacchanal or something like that and that sure. was delicious i loved mm. it yeah i went mm -hmm. there with my sister and friends and that cool. was good so yeah vegas <laughs> yeah so and then in other news zeppla started a podcast yeah. so um i'm pretty sure you're gonna be on there at some point i'm, I'm assuming <laughs> um i don't want to yeah but so if, if you haven't it. uh <laughs> yeah if you haven't check out that that podcast it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see who she brings on um yeah, I, I saw she brought on Preach, mm -hmm. and I saw she brought on Lama Todd Prior. I think, I don't know, like, she brought get. on Lama Todd, but yeah, I don't know if, like, Lama Todd was, like, considered to be part of the podcast or something, but, like, mm. uh, I did see the Preach one a little bit, and I saw Lama Todd's for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I wish her luck with the podcast, because mm -hmm. podcasts are definitely interesting to run. <laughs> yeah. I tried running one a while back, and that, uh, yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh... It was mm -hmm. whatever <laughs> yeah so i i this is a question that i pretty much ask every every guest that i have on but how right. did you get introduced into 14 how did you jump into this weird world with cat girls and lalafels how did how did you start um how did i get into 14 mm -hmm. i got into 14 uh late mm -hmm. 2020 like i said so that was during COVID. And the mm -hmm. thing to do during COVID was to stay home and not do any go anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, and I worked a job where I worked at from home, so like thankfully I was kind of like oh, I was able to kind of just like stay at home all the time and not really have to worry about stuff. <laughs> Me too. What happened was that like uh, yeah, nice, good job for you. <laughs> um, what happened was that like, uh, you know, because you couldn't go out, and I actually had a big change in my life. I had to like, move back home, and I was living on my own for a bit, but I moved back home, mm -hmm. and I found myself a lot of free time. And I was like, I don't want to spend my time just sitting here at the end of my day just playing video games all day. So I wanted to do something more meaningful. I, I did content creation before on MMO, and then I wanted to rebrand myself and just kind of start from new. And I was like, well, why not do it with 14 or something and try that? And 14 is actually a backup plan. I didn't anticipate actually going hard into 14, but well. I kind of did because, like, as we all know, if you do reaction videos, you get a lot of views and anticipation <laughs> for your content. So, right. like, well, there's something here, and I decided to stick with 14. Uh, I, and I liked the game. It was slow, obviously, for me at first, but everything kind of ramped up as you kept going through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I got into 14. Uh, I was actually getting the 14. I had a friend who played it and I joined the Leviathan server because of that friend. Mm. But uh, that friend and I actually never really end up playing too much. Uh. <laughs> so uh, we, I just kind of joined the game and just kind of like did my own thing. I'm kind of like a solo MMO player. So I just mm -hmm. kind of ended up doing my own thing and didn't really rely on the help of many people for too much. But yeah, uh, yeah. It, that's how I got into 14 essentially. Yeah, and uh, so a shorthand story. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a, a lot of people like this is what I've heard from a lot of other content creators. But a lot of people considered a realm reborn to be somewhat of a like of a filter, like a great filter, drag. like of a drag. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you, um, how like how how did you what did you think of ARR going through it, and what convinced you to to stick with it? Um, yeah, the age old meme of like you know. 
Heaven Ward makes it better, and I was like, okay, true. <laughs> I, I said, how did I? What, how do I feel about Aroma Born yeah. entirely? Or yeah, yeah. Drag man, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be real. It was a drag. I think everyone, and their mothers, <laughs> can agree that it was like pretty much a huge grind. Mm -hmm. And like, I get it. It's to build the world. It's to build, like, get a sense of what's going on. And yeah, it made sense. You know, it helped out for building yeah. the whole entire world of 14. But like, it was so long. I think the real show starts like when the big moments happen. Like mm -hmm. literally, uh, when you get to the end of Realm Reborn, the oh, big yeah. story moments. Like I remember when like Thancred was like really revealed to be like La Habrea. I was like, oh dang, mm -hmm. that was actually mm -hmm. kind of cool. Like I didn't I didn't see that coming. And then I started getting more hooked into the story. Yeah. But, uh, when you're like stuck with like go pick up these dead bodies and like you know <laughs> drop them on like that stuff like that, it just takes you out of the story a little <laughs> bit. And um, yeah, I would I would say I always stuck around the game more because. I heard it gets better, and I was mm -hmm. like, okay, like, I'll play a lot. Like, the mm -hmm. overall game was good. Like, the gameplay early on kind of grabbed me, and I was like, all right, it gets harder from here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. But I would say overall, when it came to, like, the story, it was, like, super slow, and I just tried my best to listen to it, but the story of Heaven's War was where things really kicked off, and I kind of, like, yeah, getting more involved into it. And uh, ever since then, I got hooked into the game. <laughs> was, was it your first MMO? Um... I would say 14 was like my first real traditional MMO. I played mm -hmm. one prior called Mob Nogi, and it was uh, it's a Nexon MMO, and that's uh, yeah, exactly. Not many sure. people heard of it. <laughs> it's so it's so weird. Uh, 14 has a very like WoW 14, and I think Guild Wars have a very similar style playing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like anything like different between all of them. They're all very like similar. Yeah. But uh, the other game I played was very different. It was very, like, uh, you know, turn-based in a way where it's, like, mm -hmm. you have to auto-attack, throw in some skills in between, and then the enemy attacks you and kind of go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, the other one I played prior was not like that at all. And, um, yeah, it was just a totally different game. And um, 14, I would say, it was, like, my first real MMO. I did play RuneScape, but RuneScape is kind of an MMO in a way. It's, like, a single-player kind of game as well, and I, I like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anyways, uh, 14 was my first real MMO, I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never played WoW. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, pretty much right there on the same boat. Um, this was my okay. first one. Nice. Thing. Unless you consider Club Penguin an MMO. <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, like, yeah, it's multiplayer, but not, like, you know, the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. This is, like, you know, leveling, progression, jobs, and all that. Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Yo Yoshi P has gone out and said that we're yeah. still going to get about 10 more years of content for 14 and mm -hmm. i'm just wondering on i'm wondering about how you feel about having sprouts always start on a realm reborn do you think there should be some sort of skip where they could start in dantra or even Shadowbringers, or do you think they should always have sprouts go through a realm reborn and just uh suck it up like we all do yeah so i actually thought about this a lot and talked about it with my friends so what mm -hmm. i think what they should do is add some kind of weird skip. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny though, because like if you sk like skip everything, which obviously that's kind of the point of it. Yeah. Uh, we are getting a new saga, so like the story, ideally wouldn't be too like oh you have to play from a Realm Reborn to get the idea of what's going on. I'm sure there's ways they'll fill in the gap. Right. But for the most part, um, it's, it's kind of weird because like if you the Dawn Trail, you're gonna be dropped into level 90 content. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh. your character's gonna be level 90. And there's gonna be like, you know, there's the job skips. And they ideally, if you're ever gonna skip, they want you to pay for a skip from their store. <laughs> so it, whether it be story, whether it be like leveling, like uh, yeah. skips, they, if, you did, if you did like a Dawn Trail skip, if it's free for new players, mm -hmm. they'll completely bypass everything, making it like, you know, what's the point of buying these skips if you can just like go get caught up. Right. I would say for me, adding a skip to Dawn Trail makes sense because it's like, you don't have to stick somebody as you can see, there's so many expansions that get caught up right. to uh, to, to Dawn Trail at this point. Level 90 are currently in Walker, and it's like, what, 100 in Dawn Trail? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a lot to catch up. And I've never played WoW, but from what I heard, WoW does, like, basically... I don't think they allow skips, but they do something to make it so people can get caught up. Yeah. But from a business standpoint, I can see them not doing it because they, like, want you to, like, buy their skips. But mm -hmm. also, like, um, from a gameplay perspective as well, it's like... You have to be ready to like know how to play your job at 90 at Dawn Trail like content because they're not going to suddenly just make it like level one. They yeah. want everyone to go into it with like skills that are going to drop and everything. So mm -hmm. it's a sticky situation. I would say for me, it makes sense to do it for new players so they get caught up and it's a new saga. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of caveats to it that I, it's hard for me to be like, yeah, I full send it. Like, yeah, we should do a skip all the way. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, yeah. um, 
I, I think you make a good point with the whole buying a skip and how that... I think that does make it tricky and it does uh, complicate things for them, but yeah. I don't know. Are it, you a skipper yourself or do you want to skip? <laughs> well, I'm, so you know, when, it, when it came to ARR, I, 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 I just skip a lot. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, community. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filthy I, skipper. I'm going to be real with you, too. I, so I didn't stream my Aroma Born uh, playthrough. I was taking that as my... Yeah, I know. I, I didn't talk about that at all too much. Uh, <laughs> what happened was that I actually ended up skipping a lot of it. Like, what I would do is, like, I would... And if I kind of get the gist of it, I'd be like, all right, I don't need to see the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I kind of left a lot of, like, spoilers and, mm -hmm. like, things that I just kind of missed out because I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. But um, if it was a voice cutscene, wouldn't skip. If it's text, I'd be like, uh, I don't want to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's like the, the was a guilty player. No, it's kind of like the cardinal sin to skip it. But I think for Rumor Born, it's okay to skip. <laughs> <laughs> you get a pass. <laughs> yeah, you get a pass. Yeah, I'm with you there. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I, lately, and so just just let, let me let me let me introduce this. So I haven't been around. Like I'm I'm fairly new to Final Fantasy XIV. Um, okay. I came in right around the time that Endwalker was was released. I came in. I actually came in around the time that Asbin Gold started playing so that, that that's around the time that i started playing but i've noticed that in the last couple months the last couple weeks there has been this um negativity towards endwalker yeah. especially with the post patches and i know you made a video on it as well but i wanted to ask you um is it common for there to be this sort of negativity towards an expansion negativity. in between the content droughts or is this you know sort of new because uh, like I said, like I haven't been around for that long, but how have you seen the community and how how they how they uh, look at expansions? Yeah, so for me, it was like I came in during Shadowbringer, so mm -hmm. like during the end of Shadowbringer, 5.3. 5, 5. Yeah. So it was kind of I was right in the middle of it, and during that time, I was trying to catch up, so it was hard for me to catch up on the dialogue that was happening. Mm -hmm. But from what I've heard, overall, like literally, um, this happens every time. Like mm -hmm. I, I was like, I saw Frosty's tweet you know mock talk he's been doing this yeah. forever he's played since a rumor born he said this happens like all the time this is nothing new and mm. um i think what happened was that like even during Shadowbringers, i didn't notice people like kind of bagged on bajja they did not like bajja <laughs> at all and now people are like we want bajja back I, I, mm -hmm. bajja, I didn't mind it but like um i would say this is like a common thing we just want to complain about stuff yeah uh, i say now it's time around it's more blown up because obviously people are making videos on it i made sure. a video zeppelin you know so it's kind of mm -hmm. like the the three people who are you know making active content in 14 are talking about it so yeah. i would say it's negative because the the, the vocal uh, it's, i I, th I okay i could get in trouble for saying this <laughs> i think it's the vocal minority saying it uh -huh. i think a majority of the player base don't care mm -hmm. i did see something about one of my mutual songs with the jp player base not really saying much they don't really have much negativity towards it mm. investigate that actually so mm -hmm. i would say this is just people just just wanting to like complain and talk about things that they want to see in the game which is great but yeah. like i think overall it happens all the time this is people want things to do in 14 but unfortunately we won't have anything big or major to do until like literally like, how, now like yeah dawn yeah. trail until like next summer so it's going to be a long wait and unfortunately this is something that happens every time <laughs> i believe from what i heard and i'm yeah. not so surprised if it, it does and uh yeah i would say overall i'm not too surprised by this mm -hmm. okay okay so yeah uh, changing gears a little bit um yeah you know I, I was looking at your youtube uh analytics on on social blade and um i noticed that you have you know passed 40k subs and um i mm -hmm. i was curious um is there like a a goal subscriber count that you would like to see on your youtube channel or are you at the point where you just don't even look at it anymore you don't really care I still look at it. I mm -hmm. think uh, it's hard to push subscribers nowadays because people just t typically watch videos without subscribing. And yeah. I, I subscribe. I try to when I can, but it's hard to. And um, to get, because obviously people are like like to watch one video from yours and then just move on. Sure. Um, I I like to keep pushing it and try to grow that number more. Um, you said it's something. Is it something that I, I look at or something? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I look at it. But the most important thing on YouTube is just views. Honestly, at this right. point, and um, yeah of views is, is always great and i think that's like the biggest push i want to do with my content so mm -hmm. there's a, was that a second part to your question uh what was it it was like uh, uh I, subscriber I, count yeah and then, then you don't even remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would say subscriber count um is like 
it's not as important, but I still like seeing that number go up because mm -hmm. silver plate in my eventually gold plate in the future, right? The 1 million subscribers. So, wow. uh, yeah, that's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> that is the dream. And we'll see how it goes. We'll yeah. See how it goes. Um, well, so what has been your, your reaction to your YouTube channel from the people like around you in real life, like your, your friends and your family, do you talk about YouTube at all with them or is it kind of just, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say for my family, for my sister, I talk to her about a lot of things. So mm -hmm. she kind of knows a lot of the intricacies that I talk about yeah. in content, even though she doesn't want to hear it. She kind of like has no like she doesn't typically. She's kind of just like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll listen to him because he's ranting about stuff. But <laughs> uh, family, my 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 parents, they don't care as long as I make money. They're like, whatever. <laughs> but um, I would say I keep it low key. Like I used mm -hmm. to be active on ugh, Facebook and like <laughs> other social medias. But ever since I moved onto YouTube, I started being more active on Twitter. Yeah, being around people who like 14 rather than people who like I went to college or school with. And mm. like, I just don't really want to be around that scene anymore. Yeah. So like some of my people in real life know that I do YouTube as like an active thing, but they don't like I don't push it too much because I don't really go on those social medias anymore. I just kind of keep yeah. it towards uh, the side of things rather than like my IRL uh, former past life self because mm -hmm. <laughs> I moved on from that. Yeah. Gotcha. But overall, the reactions is pretty much he's making money. Like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> they don't really care too much. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're like, whatever about it. Uh huh. What, what motivated you into wanting to jump into the content creation space in, in the first place? Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah. like I, I think more about like, so I did work traditional jobs, you know, mm -hmm. like the stable jobs of like, I worked at an office, I worked in programming, I did all this stuff. Yeah. And I just didn't feel fulfilled. Like, mm -hmm. COVID time, like I said, I was working a job, I was working from home, but like, it wasn't something that like, I was like, happy to do or like, you know, I did it for the paycheck. And I was kind of like, this yeah. is like, what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, I get that it's a stable paycheck, like you're able to kind of like, keep a living and keep going but mm -hmm. i didn't really feel like i was moving mm -hmm. and you know i kind of did the thing where it's like you know nine to five you go home and you just like relax until you sleep and then do it all over again and i wanted yeah. to do it something different in my life i was like this is boring i want to be able to like do something where i'm kind of like i guess challenged because this is way more challenging than before yeah. but also like i always had a wanting to be funny or talk about things and like mm -hmm. make content I didn't want to be a programmer my whole life or something like that. So I was like, I'm going to yeah. try to uh, do something different with my life. And uh, here we are. Yeah. I decided to kind of just make the push and go for YouTube rather than stick with a quote unquote normal life and mm -hmm. do get a job, get married and, and die. <laughs> I want to kind of do something where it's like I'm challenged uh, mm -hmm. and I am doing something where I'm more happier than just programming and being bored right. out of my brain in the office, <laughs> counting the clock or yeah. going down. Is, yeah. is, so is is it fair to say that you are a full time content creator? Is that? I mean, yeah, I would, I would say so. <laughs> so. I think that's like the the thing that everyone is doing if you've been actively making content on YouTube. Yeah, for so a number of times, years. Yeah. How, like, when did you get to the point where you were like, okay, I can finally quit my day job? Like, how? Like, what, what was that? Like, what what was that thought process like? Uh, I quit my day job because I was actually on transitioning, leaving my day job. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what, I'll do YouTube and I want to see where it takes me. I actually had a really small goal of like, within a year, I want to get 1K subscribers. But I ended up mm -hmm. getting K within my first year. And I was like, holy cow, wow. like, this is actually a lot better than I anticipated. Yeah, yeah so um, I... I, I guess like I just kind of jumped right into it. I didn't I didn't wait for me to be like, oh my mm. god, like I need to like, um, what's the what's the word? Like I need to quit my job after I've like made a certain amount of money. I was like, mm. to it because yeah. I was already leaving my job, and then I was like, if it doesn't work out YouTube, I can just go right back to job search. But right. it's been working out pretty well, and uh, I, I I like it. So yeah. <laughs> I stuck with it ever since. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, do you consider like Kogon as like a character or is it just you being you? Yeah, I would consider it like Kogon being like, uh, it's me for the most part, just a little bit more uppity and like more like obviously for the camera. Yeah. But for the most part, um, I am like super chill IRL, mm -hmm. but I keep it pretty genuine. Like I'm still kind of like the same me outside of things, but just more chilled than I am. Uh, I would say like obviously on like streams and stuff i'm a little bit like oh my god and like going crazy like reactions yeah. and stuff but outside of that i'm just pretty much just me but just tone <laughs> gotcha yeah yeah um how, how many like so how, how many projects or, or videos are you like working on at one time or do you kind of just have one video in mind and you just you know watch it through into completion or do you have like multiple things in your mind that you know you're working on at the same time 
Uh, I usually just work on one project at a time, so like one video, but I always have like a lot of ideas ready. Right. It's just like I have a lot of ideas ready and just I write the ideas down so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. And then when I need to pull out a new idea, I just go for that new idea and start building upon it. And you YouTube videos, you want to come up with a good concept yeah. for a video. So it's like I have these concepts ready, I just need to flesh them out further by just sitting there and actually like uh, putting the time into making a good script and jokes and everything and topic mm -hmm. to make it worth people's uh, watch time. So yeah, it's one project at a time, but a lot of ideas are ready on kind of start pushing the next thing going. Yeah, essentially. Do, do you uh, do you have like a like a list somewhere like a like a like in your notes app? Do you have like a bunch of ideas? Yeah, of videos? I, I have a bunch of ideas on my phone actually. Yeah. So like at all times, I would like have it on my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, if an idea comes to me that's really good, I write it down immediately. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I those moments where like I'm in bed and I can't sleep, but like I, a great idea comes to me, I just write it on my phone immediately because I have my phone right next to me on my bed. Yeah, and that's how I kind of get my ideas ready. And then that way, mm. future me would be like, oh crap, that was a good idea that passed me, bro. And then like let's take that <laughs> idea, and flush it out a bit further, and talk about it. So yeah, it's there's like that, but also sometimes sensitive time topics where it's like yeah, the, the latest one I made was like the whole like you know Zeppelin and everybody saying mm -hmm. they don't like 14 and Walker content. Mm -hmm. You know I gotta sometimes stop other projects to make that video right away so because it's more relevant to the topic at hand so you right. kind of move things around yeah it's flexible okay. okay yeah um what do you consider a successful video like in terms of view count or how, how, how do you see it so before it used to be for me like view count was like a good measure of like oh if i get like at least 15k plus on a video that's like a start right there like that means mm -hmm. this video is doing well for me but I, I'm starting to change my metrics of like how I view successful videos now because I, uh, I think I hinted at and said to you prior a little bit that I am trying to slowly move away from 14 content. Yeah. Because uh, as you know, we're heading towards a drought. Mm -hmm. About. And I would also like to kind of upgrade my content and not do 14 content forever. So uh, yeah. I want to try to move on to other topics. So now my new my new measurement would be like something simple. Like I actually kind of made a goal for myself uh, to make. A certain amount of videos between a certain time frame instead of just like waiting till uh the new year new goal i just started mm -hmm. whatever i said that time period from a year from then like do this goal which is like make a certain amount of videos that aren't about 14 and get like maybe i don't know like 5k views on it because like you yeah. gotta start small you can't expect like my whole entire viewer base to be like oh my god he made koga made a video jump jump to it but it's like <laughs> wait with me because a lot of my people want to just watch 14 only mm -hmm. so my new measure is I like probably that. like uh new videos that aren't about 14 but have a pretty okay amount of views that i know over time it will grow mm -hmm. uh for me it would be like if a video doesn't get like 15 k's within like two weeks that's a failure and uh it's uh yeah. changing the metric up a little bit now until i like, can see what works for me cool. yeah and it, it's interesting that you say that because you know I, i've been talking to a couple other creators just by doing this podcast and mm -hmm. i've heard a lot of them say that it seems like a majority of the 14 community doesn't really care about YouTube content or that the like the views are very inconsistent. Um, how like do you, do you feel that that way as well or how do you see it? Oh yeah, that's big time. That's like obviously if you built your whole viewer base around 14 content, you switch mm -hmm. it up, you get the same results. So yeah, it's realistic to think about like you know if you're gonna make a new video that isn't gonna be about 14, expect that video to not do well mm -hmm. and. Um, I hate to say it, a lot of people like to act like as if they're fans of me or something, <laughs> but the reality is like they're more fans of the 14 content I do, mm. the actual like my backers. And I, I think, mm. you know, I don't think it's a rude thing to say. I think it's just real because like I, I watch people for certain topics or certain videos. And yeah. if they're not doing those certain things, I don't watch them at all, which mm -hmm. is like, you know, it sucks because we all expect to have loyal viewers who care about everything we everything we do. Yeah. I have 40,000 subs. They should be able, I should expect like 40,000 views on every single one of my videos every single time. That's not the case because sometimes people don't want to watch 14 at the moment. Like mm -hmm. I think people want to watch whatever hot new game is out there. Uh, you know, we had so many great games this year, like Zelda. People probably were into Zelda for one month. People were into this, like Elden Ring. Year. Yeah, I was gonna say Elden Ring. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna say Elden Ring, but like Baldur's Gate is the yeah. one that like got really big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The the, the Baldur's yeah. Gate pipeline is crazy. Yeah, when it comes to create, it's like, crazy. FF14. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's you got to be realistic with yourself. Essentially, you got to like pretty much like um whenever like you make a new video that isn't about your core audience stuff, mm -hmm. you have to have a realistic expectation of like how many views you'll get. And I think the hidden secret that a lot of people don't really know is that like whenever you're making a new video, always aim to get new players. Never sit there, mm. try to rely on your old viewers 
to come back every single time. Mm -hmm. My videos are always targeted to trying to grab new people mm -hmm. and trying to grab, like, if you're an old viewer watching, awesome. Because sometimes I look at my metrics and it, the metrics say, like, not many returning viewers are watching this, but, like, yeah. a lot of new people are just browsing, uh, you know, YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's important. That's why it always comes down to having a good title and good thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just say, you know, I do my analytics. I look around. <laughs> I've seen people who think they have good titles and thumbnails. And then when their other videos don't do too well, I'm kind of like, well, maybe <laughs> a retrospective and, you know, look into that a little bit more. So yeah, uh, it's a topic that I love talking about. And essentially, it, um, I forgot what the question was that you asked, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it does suck to get pigeonholed into like 14 content. Mm -hmm. But like, if you want to make that break and get out of 14, you have to be okay with losing views and just keep pushing. Yeah. Keep trying to improve your game rather than just uh, make a good video and call it there. You have to have a good title, good thumbnail, and just good overall package mm -hmm. in general. Like you just can't make a simple video and you lie in your title and thumbnail and mm -hmm. it doesn't deliver. People don't like that. You gotta have a good idea that goes complements with your title. And oh, anyways, that's your yeah. big YouTube tip. Sorry, I, I, I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> no, I, I like it a lot. That, that's why you're here. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Do, uh, do, do you? I, I'm sure you you edit your own videos, correct? Yeah. Did, I, did, I do, so I did you teach yourself how to edit? Like, how, what, what was that process like for you? Yeah, I taught myself how to edit like years ago. I used to do YouTube way back. And I see one of my friends in the game right now. Yeah. Hey, Almia. Um, I played, uh, sorry, I played. I, I edited and do videos, do videos. I did videos way back in the day, like literally almost 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, I did simple cuts and simple like edits. Mm -hmm. I used to make like little silly, on my, old, on my old YouTube channel, my old alias, but yeah. I moved on ever since, and I still edit my own videos now because I really like having to put my own spin to it. Mm -hmm. I don't really like to pay an editor or want to pay an editor because uh, I don't really want to... <laughs> I don't really... I don't know. I think it's a trust thing. I don't really trust editors right now. Mm -hmm. Style, like, kind of how, how I do things and etc. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. how I am with my own content. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, I... I, I because you mentioned that you know you you stream and you make uh youtube videos i'm wondering which one do you prefer do you have like a, a preference to videos. either one yeah videos big time <laughs> i hate streaming i, I, I came to a point where i don't like streaming because like uh -huh. it's kind of the same thing with youtube like you can't always rely on like your whole it's entire tough. viewer base to come back yeah yeah it's tough and like the only way to really make streaming work is if you're making big events mm. all time like you have to hype up something you're going to do people mm -hmm. will want to tune in and you know make a uh, time out of their day to come actually check out this thing yeah. but if you're like so that's what happens like i, I, I that's gonna be a weird segue but i really <laughs> want to talk about this something that, like, that people <laughs> sure. don't really talk about Go for so it. as we all know if you do your msq reaction people watch you. Mm -hmm. that is your big event right there people yeah. want to see you go through the msq cry you know lose it at a certain story <laughs> moment and people want to they want to like live it again through you yeah but people notice that as soon as you're done with the msq you lose all your viewers mm. because well when you start doing boring like i'm gonna be brutal about this if you're doing boring roulette streams just like hey guys i'm just gonna stream my roulettes and talk about how my day went yeah it's boring mm -hmm. and like it's just i hate to break it to a lot of 14 streamers <laughs> but like that people don't want to watch that like i remember <laughs> i i have to admit friends doing like interesting cool things but if you're just doing a normal roulette stream we're talking about your day mm -hmm. i'm probably gonna tune out and watch something else on youtube on netflix right because it's a competition like I, I hate to say it like it's a competition like i think people like want to live in this world where like we want to work together and it's a, you know we're all friends, rainbows and everything but mm -hmm. we're all competing for viewers times and their their eyes and if you're not doing something enough to grab their attention they're gonna go watch somebody else they're gonna watch and do something else and it's tough and that's why uh, streaming, I don't like it. YouTube, you can make a good video, mm -hmm. let it sit there, let it marinate, and watch <laughs> it. My new video, I, I made it within the first week. I got like 30k views, and I was like, yeah. all right, it's probably gonna, you know, plateau at that point. Mm -hmm. It doubled in views, like it has like 70k views, I think, at this yeah. point. And I sat back and didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I did my first stream back, uh, doing the MSQ, mm -hmm. and um, I knew it was gonna take a hit because I haven't streamed in forever. And I did, like, it was a very, eh, stream. Like, I wasn't really too into it. I was kind of, like, just doing this because I, you know, I usually stream, stream my MSQs, but yeah. um, I kind of, like, vibe off the energy. It's like, if there's nobody really there, why am I streaming this? I could have <laughs> just done it, you know, like... Yeah. And as you know, with streaming, you kind of have to try to get into it, be more entertaining for your viewers. Mm -hmm. I hate doing that if there's nobody to entertain. I'm like, what's the point of doing this? Man, and, man, uh, man. It, yeah, I know, I know. I'm, I'm speaking, I'm speaking the truth here. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and for me, instead of waiting, streaming, spending four hours, mm -hmm. why not 
spend those four hours doing something and then turn into a video, edit and do a stuff later rather mm -hmm. than, you know, put all that energy into streaming. The, you know, and I think we all like to, you know, we have to be real about ourselves. The view count, when you do, when it's not up, it sucks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when that's not up, if you get really upset <laughs> and I, I don't like doing that. And when you're streaming, you notice it and it hurts you. And that, it hurts me still. Like I'll admit it. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I don't pay attention to views. But like, you have to. It's how you grow. You have mm -hmm. to like figure out a metric. So anyways, what I'm getting at is I, I hate streaming. I, I like to make videos <laughs> way more. Uh, yeah. Because you can make a good video, let it sit there, and then people will come in and tune into you. And the best part is with YouTube, it has a, like a pretty much a passive growth system where mm -hmm. it's like you can upload a video, let it sit there, and I get subs. Uh, yeah. With Twitch, you have to be active. Or streaming in general, you have to be there. That's true. With YouTube... You put up your video, you can chill and hang back. Yeah. And you slowly get the uh, people to watch you. Because as you can see, uh, you you found me through YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't find me mm -hmm. through, through Twitch streaming. So. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. There you go. That, that I, I know mm. it's a long answer, but like, man, I, I get so heated about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I hate, I, I, don't, I don't, okay, I don't mind streaming when it's good, but like it, I, when it's a waste of time, in my opinion, to mm -hmm. like not get the results I want, then I'm like, this is not worth it. I rather do something else instead yeah. um so anyways yeah i, I, just, I hate streaming <laughs> i don't like streaming <laughs> as much as i do making okay wait, okay wait one more one more yeah, so yeah, like yeah. with youtube you're you're being more creative you know mm -hmm. you're able to make your jokes craft it take the time streaming you have to be really witty on the spot fast you have mm -hmm. to be really entertaining quick but with youtube you can take your time with it mm -hmm. and that's like the biggest thing i would like i, I like I, I like about youtube yeah you can take your time and with streaming, it's like just so slow, and like you have to like make things happen, or else it's just a boring stream. But yeah. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> what, what what do you do? Or have you ever had a have you ever had a moment where you upload a video and yeah. there's something completely wrong, or something that like editing went wrong? Like how how do you deal with like a video that you need to either take down or re-upload? Do you like do you do that, or how how, how do you like do you just let it it's let it happened sit there? like. Yeah, it's happened like once mm -hmm. in the recent years. It was during the Billboard, the infamous Billboard 14 thing, with mm. the, the beach party thing. Right. Oh, good uh, times. That whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So I made that video. I was going to clown on them because, you know, I, I thought it was a stupid thing that they were doing. But then <laughs> I made my video and I got the topic wrong. And I felt bad about it because, like, the people who mm. made the big ideas, the, the idea for the Billboard, you know, the people at the top of it, yeah. they were the ones throwing away, making it look stupid, while there's people who actually put effort into making it look good, was mm -hmm. mistreated, and they looked really bad. And I felt bad about that, so I took that video down and mm -hmm. redid it, and like, the same night, actually. And I, I, I got the story straight after talking to people who actually worked the... So, um, yeah. overall, I would say that that's, like, happened once or twice, but for the most part, I try my best to measure the amount of, like, research, and, like, is it worth making, and then, like, you know, mm -hmm. just leave it up there. Actually, it's happened once again before. There was another video I made. It was like, mm -hmm. so as you can see, videos take a while to make. Yeah. And if you don't get the result you want, it sucks. Mm. But uh, some people decide to take, uh, you know, the, I guess I feel bad calling it the easy way out, but it's mm -hmm. a much easier method. It's essentially taking your streams and then turning the videos and high and I, as you know, it's like the meta for a lot of people. Like Zeppla has their sure. secondary channel, Zepp Live. Yeah. Uh, Zeno's pretty much, that's all his ch channel like is pretty much about. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried doing that once, but I talked about Lost Ark and yeah. how I didn't want to play Lost Ark. And people got mad at me for that. <laughs> I just talked about how I didn't want to play Lost Ark. So yeah. I took it down because I felt like, one, it was just like, uh, just dumb. I didn't mean for it to turn into a whole thing about people getting mad at me for not playing Lost Ark. But two, mm -hmm. like... Um, I didn't feel like it was really up to my YouTube standards. Like, I, mm. whenever I make a video, I want to make something, like, but not just, like, a simple, like, uh, like, I talk about this thing that really wasn't really worth talking about and, like, just turn into a video just for the sake of turning into a video. So, mm -hmm. it's happened at least twice in, the, like, my memory that I can think of that I've taken on a video that's went public and then I just you know, bring it down. Yeah, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, what well, what is your perspective? Because I think this is, for me, this is one of my more personal, um, like interest when it comes like in, in topics but how do you feel about the whole discussion around spoilers and spoiling um like things in final fantasy 14 like how, how do you see that because i felt that a lot of the community tends to be a little bit um overprotective when it comes to old content especially with msq and and spoilers so how, how do you see this whole discussion i would say just like in like i so 
I don't mind, you know, people putting up spoiler warnings, especially for current content. Um, but, you know, like I've, I've made videos where in 2023, I'll put like a video about something that happened in Heaven's Word and then I'll get some people, you know, <laughs> complaining about spoilers. How, how do you yeah. see this? Yeah, so going into it, I knew right away you have to be careful about spoils in general. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say it's best just to err on the side of like, just don't spoil things for people that if it's like a big moment, mm -hmm. something that on the thumbnail, that's like a huge spoiler. And the community does a really good job about trying to like protect new players. Because when I got into yeah. 14, I had no idea what was going to happen in like a lot of the expansions and like even Shadowbringers blew me away. I was like not expecting the you know, it for to end the way it did yeah. or the villain to be the villain. I was like, what the heck is happening? Right. Like it was like really good. But I would say that, um, what was the question exactly? So I, can address it. it's, I guess you said, like, how do I feel about spoilers in general? Yeah. Like how like, people are policing it. Mm -hmm. I think it comes in both parts. Like, I think people should do their best to not watch content until they're caught up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't watch anything until I finally caught up. Mm -hmm. But also, like, uh, people also need to try, like, as creators, we should try our best to not spoil things too much. Mm -hmm. That's why in my videos, even, like, I, I included a joke about a certain character's death in a certain expansion. Yeah. I would put that expansion, I'll be like, hey, this is there's a quick spoiler for that expansion. Just, if you're okay with that, mm -hmm. move on. So, yeah, I would say it, for both sides, we, we got to be careful about, like, people got to be active about not watching content. Because, you know, people could talk about something that they thought wasn't spoilers in their content, but yeah. it's spoilers for other people. And the viewers also need to realize it. Watch this thing mm -hmm. because you're not caught up yet at all. So, yeah, there's like that. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I bring it up just because I've, I've talked to some people who say that sometimes they feel like they're walking on eggshells when they're trying to make yeah. content, especially for, for anything that has to do with MSQ. Yeah, just always put a spoiler warning for everything. Just, yeah. just be safe. I would say that's the thing to do, honestly. That way <laughs> you can make nobody mad. And if they watch it, at that point, it's their fault. <laughs> they walked yeah. into it, even though you said, no, don't watch this. So yeah. That's fair. Um, yeah. What a... Uh, insurance. <laughs> what, so, um, when it comes to YouTube, what do you consider like the golden age of YouTube for your like like for your own personal self? Like wh like what was the uh, like wh what sort of channels did you watch? I guess growing up or when when you actually started watching YouTube content? Like how how wh where did you like what do you consider the golden age of YouTube? Uh, the golden age of YouTube, mm -hmm. I would say this is like a weird question mm -hmm. not a weird question because you, like, i'm trying to find like an, an answer like, yeah because like, my answer would be weird i guess for me yeah. for me uh, it was the smosh era because that's when i was what when, when smosh was you know on the top oh smosh yeah doing yeah, their things the like day. yeah th because that's <laughs> when i that's when i started watching youtube and you know all, yeah. all those channels like uh, smosh equals three those were like my that's what i consider like the golden age of youtube but how, how where how do you see it what channels yeah so i guess for me it's like weird because like when I was younger, I was watching like, you know, gaming videos and mm -hmm. like machinimas. Mm -hmm. I would say the golden era for me is like not too long ago when Mr. Beast was on his rise, mm -hmm. like not because of his content, but like the idea of this unknown guy coming yeah. out of making the YouTube system and then playing with it and then making it like his bitch. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. he is killing it on YouTube. Wow. He made a whole empire. Mm -hmm. He's he's doing great. And that was like honestly one of the inspirations for me, like to like you can take whatever you're doing yeah. and like elevate it and make yourself you know I, i've seen a lot of people when i started doing 14 content mm -hmm. they were bigger than me like mm -hmm. people who had like maybe around like 5,000 subscribers and i had like 500 yeah i surpassed them because i took the lessons i've learned from watching and analyzing how youtubers do it yeah. and I, I surpassed them because like where i now but when mr beast's rise to even now i think this is the golden era of youtube i think this mm. is like an era where you can still make it back in the day it was like a weird like PewDiePie like I guess this is coming from me like I'm a gaming person I guess but like yeah. I, I didn't watch too much PewDiePie but like PewDiePie was known for just recording and playing a game and like mm -hmm. nowadays you have to do something even more to make yourself grow and stand Correct. out and I think this is what I like about YouTube system now is that you're able to control your title your thumbnail mm -hmm. and essentially grow from there and I think that this is like the golden age of YouTube because there's a lot of content that I like watching and also like, like, I guess yeah. when it comes to a channel like watching like uh, Drew Gooding, mm. uh, Danny Gonzalez. This is like those those guys are funny. They, yeah. I like that stuff. It's it's funny because I don't really watch too much fourteen content. I like watching Me too. other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch other people and then I take from them and learn from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say also another thing was like Runes. Runescape content creators are great. There was like a guy 
who played a uh, runescape mm -hmm. and you know how like imagine a whole world of 14 mm -hmm. but locking your character into one area in 14 and my well, my friend Rath actually did this recently uh he locked oh. his character instead of leveling and all of 14 mm -hmm. he locked his character only and had a level in limsa and that's really cool to see those challenges and it's cool because those videos were existing way back in runescape the guy did like a he called swamp Ludix, where it's like pretty much uh, you're taking a challenge of putting your character in a swampy area and they have to stay there the whole time and they can never leave mm -hmm. except for a few exceptions to make things work but um mm -hmm. essentially he took that idea and put it to 14 and he, that video did really well it got like 100k views within like a month or yeah. something and I, I had to give him love so mm -hmm. that is what i i we're in the we're, i think right now we're in the current uh, golden era of youtube to me because nice. it's like you could take great ideas and with a good time you're able to grow from there. And right. that's what I respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what sort of future plans do you have for your channel? Because I, I know you said you wanted to start, you know, branching out a little bit to other games. Uh, what, what, what does that look like? What, what, what sort of uh, content are you going to be doing, you know, next year? Um, I wouldn't even say next year. I'm like doing it now. I'm actually mm. suffering through a really terrible Square Enix game. Uh. <laughs> and uh, this is a game that I literally looked at it and I was like, this game can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. I played it and I'm almost at the end of it. And I'm like, this game is that bad. And I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I take a lot of inspiration from a lot of like YouTube videos that are like long form uh, essay type videos. And I kind of want to go yeah. that route. And just like, yeah, I want to be like, talk about a game and actually like, you know, do more than just 14 oh my god new item release <laughs> new Talk drama new item, like <laughs> new drama i want to do something where it's like i'm being i'm not trying to be like self-centered but like mm -hmm. I, I guess i'm the center of attention rather than just the topic of the video is mm -hmm. because you know if i talk about let's say a few months ago i talked about like the g posing uh g pose is that what's called the, the that little tool that people use g that, like how to g shade what's that g shade. g shade thank you thank you that's it yeah so i talked about that but people obviously came in to hear what the heck was happening and they were mm. like all right goodbye ko and they moved on yeah. but i want to find like content where people are like this kogan guy is saying a lot of great things it's like you know make a lot of you know stuff that i like and that's mm -hmm. kind of what i want to do so uh i'm in form videos and like right now like i said i'm trying to stay square enix adjacent so final mm -hmm. fantasy and stuff but um eventually move on to other things like and just talk about stuff that isn't even about Square Enix and hopefully just make uh, funny videos in general. So yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, that's kind of at the moment. And also, mm -hmm. uh, real quick, I want to take in, I take inspiration from uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf. He makes a lot of great long form essay videos, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's great because all he does is just talk about how great a seri certain series is. He doesn't do any crazy tricks about this series sucks and this is why. <laughs> he just talks about Chainsaw Man is a and then people yeah. and I'm like I want to do that I want to be able to not be so negative about everything and, just, and you know and I hate to say it but like 14 like viewers they always act like man I hate this drama content it sucks, but you guys eat this shit up yeah. you guys love it yeah it, it, true to break it to you guys but you guys watch it I, I, and people want to sit there and be like Ko you can't even like make a non-drama video I do <laughs> but you guys don't watch it you guys don't watch it. I've seen so many 14 creators that uh -huh. make amazing videos like editing styles on the same level of pint right mm -hmm. yeah. but these guys don't get what people don't they don't tune into that stuff they just want to watch whatever xenos is crying about or Zeno <laughs> and xenos or zeppla and I'm, I'm not trying to say like you know oh like they're crying about stuff all the time but like mm -hmm. people just like to see drama they don't want to see mm -hmm. drama all the time and that's the thing about 14 content that really sucks if you're mm -hmm. not pint or joe cat making videos it's hard for you to grow and it just sucks so, yeah um I don't know what's going with all that, but essentially what I'm getting at, it, it's hard. Oh yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is like 14 viewers really like drama content mm -hmm. and it sucks because like there's a lot of great non-drama content creators out there. There's people who make lore like Synodic Scribe and all yeah. these other people. He's great. Wrath makes these crazy challenges, but they're just not being watched because simply people don't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I hate the blame you put on like creators just making, you know, drama videos only, but it's like you guys also like that drama. You guys consume it, so that's why we make it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's my yeah. reason. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyways, I'm trying to break away from 14 to, to do more drama content on 14, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um Yeah. There, we had a couple of questions from 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 the chatters here. Um okay. let's see. We have someone named Minsi say question with the new expansion next year what do you hope they add or add in or carry on into Don trail where do you see these questions is it in chat right now or is it like yeah oh that, that was my tiktok chat oh that's your tiktok chat okay yeah. like, what did they say sorry <laughs> oh uh what, what what do you want Dontrell. to see added in Don trail um 
But the thing I want to really see the most is like a Baja like area, like mm. a Baja Eureka area, because I actually enjoy that stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I did it initially, but like later on, I did it off on my own, yeah. and I like doing it a lot. So um, I would say more Baja like content would be great. Yeah. Okay. Did Did it bother you that the relic grind grind for Endwalker was just tombstones? Nah, yeah. I wasn't bothered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I me wasn't too. bothered at all because like I like just the idea. Of, okay, first off, I haven't done it. Uh, <laughs> I know how it works. It's just yeah. simply turning your tombstones, uh -huh. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to spend this much time grinding. Like, I was there when the Shadowbringer relics were new and mm -hmm. the, the latest thing, and I was like, I'm not doing this shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I it was like do a twelve alliance raids for one step, and you have to do like all the other mm -hmm. alliance raids. I was like, No, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go play other games. Yeah. At the end of the day, it, it becomes obsolete. It's just glamour. What's mm -hmm. the point of doing this stuff mm. when it doesn't, you know, become relevant other than just looking good? And yeah. I like doing the old relics because of Rebel Born, you could solo and unsync all the fates and do all the, not the fates, but like unsync dungeons, but dungeons. do fates on your own. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do all that. I'm, I like a simple tome, stone turned in. This is just me. Mm -hmm. I like doing that. Mm -hmm. Other people want that grind. I'm sorry you didn't get that grind, but I'm glad I got the tome stone turned in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it a lot. So how, I like just getting my weapon and moving on. Yeah. How, how, wait, how, so how many relic weapons do you currently own? Have? Yeah. And from this expansion or in general? In general, from all the expansions. In general? Because I don't have any. I have seven. <laughs> well, oh, you're Endwalker missing out. Room. Yeah. I, okay, so I completed sure i have a lot of incompletes yeah. but completed i completed like maybe or maybe like four or five a realm reborns and uh -huh. that's pretty much it i have like shadowbringer started i think stormblood i started as well because that's part of eureka but like i never really got past that because i wanted to get the armor from eureka more than i wanted the weapons but one day i'll go back to the weapons but mm -hmm. yeah i would say that it's like not unfortunately because i yeah. that's a lot of time spent and i don't want to spend that much time in content yeah <laughs> sure yeah. um how do you feel about pvp i love pvp I, mm. I love it a lot i was actually casting last night i love being brought oh, on the cast cool. i love talking about pvp mm. yeah and i like supporting the community a lot and i wish it has way more love for the scene than uh a a as like big esport games are because uh when i was at the um what, what do you call it? when i was at uh fan fest and they had the mm -hmm. uh crystal conflict tournament going on yeah that was fun to see the crowd go crazy first oh yeah i want to see more of that i i really like seeing pvp i like playing it mm -hmm. i just like it a lot I i'm a huge fan of pvp content mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. are um... you I've, I've played Crystalline Conflict. I think Crystalline Conflict is the more interesting of the PvP. Um, yes, it is. Frontline, <laughs> I feel like Frontline, no, too no, much is going frontline. on that it, you don't really feel like it, you're doing anything, in my yucky. opinion. I don't like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think they need to reach work Frontline to be like a, just a one-on-one -on -one team thing rather than oh, uh, two yeah. teams fight each other while the other team just gets the goal and just moves on and wins. It's it's mm -hmm. so dumb. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did you feel about the Lollafell trade? Um, so that that was like the drama where like there was like a Lollafell chair and people were like you're babyfying the Lollafell essentially, oh, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was stupid. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't care to talk about this. I was like, whatever. <laughs> I was like, are we really gonna talk about like this? Yeah. People are getting mad about this. Like, come on, guys. I, I just died. I didn't give it attention. I was like, uh, whatever. I'm gotcha. just gonna go back to playing other games and moving on. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is dumb. I'm like, this is like I said, people want the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> Mickey is such a big deal. And I'm like, you guys, you guys act like you don't like drama, but you guys like drama. Get mm. out of here. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I guess really the only other question that I have for you is, um, yeah. Are you gonna be part, or I mean, maybe not? Are you? But so were you part of the Endwalker media tour that the devs were doing when Endwalker was first? announced i think i i think you cut off real quick you said was i a part of the endwalker media tour Is yeah question yeah i was not no okay i wasn't mm -hmm. i wasn't invited yeah if you were if you're invited to dontro would you do it i think yeah i definitely would mm -hmm. go i think i would love to go um i don't know who they choose like it's really right. weird because like even when i was like new i was like i had a lot of subscribers and like mm -hmm. i saw other people invited that were like smaller than me and i was like i don't know what's going on there but sure maybe that's just like they had a people they want to invite mm -hmm. i'm not really much of a combat person so it's hard for me to be like oh this, this change here for this job will certainly make it better mm -hmm. um <laughs> but i would go just to make content about like this is like the new thing that's happening to this job and you know being added to these skills yeah i would make content about it but like i don't know if i theory of like maybe being a hardcore raider is that what they're looking for mm. or like i don't know if they're looking for people who are like really good at like 
gameplay analysis and stuff and like mm -hmm. understanding how jobs work for every single job work i i'm just really good in gunbreaker and uh, i'm really good in yeah. black mage i'm okay in gunbreaker <laughs> recently but yeah. uh I, if i was to go to media tour yeah i would love to go but um do i have my expectations of going i i don't actually no i'm not <laughs> banking on going like i'm gonna be real like yeah. i know people like i see a lot of my mutuals like man i'd love to go to media tour man i love you this but honestly i think that the control and focus on the things that oh no sorry uh the best thing for me is to focus on the things that i can control which is just making good videos mm -hmm. and um if i get invited make content awesome if i don't no harm no foul move on like <laughs> i know a lot of people are putting a lot of like value into like if they get onto this their life forever i'm like nah guys it's, it's not <laughs> <Yeah>. it's <laughs> just like it's not gonna be that life-changing it's cool mm -hmm. but like it's not gonna be like deciding factor in your 14 content creation journey so right yeah uh, yeah all are right are you looking forward to going to the media <laughs> tour i know you I, might get it in like i mm, mm. i I've, it's funny because <laughs> I've, I've always said like my like even though it would never happen my dream oh my, come on <laughs> no, so, it could happen no, no, uh, so e even though it might never happen my dream job has always been to be able to run like a a social media um account for for either square enix or for final fantasy 14 like for whatever reason there's no english final fantasy 14 tiktok account they have a J they have a jp one but no american english one so i think that oh, would cool. be that would be my dream uh my dream yeah, job go bring it up with them go go email them go shoot your shot you yeah, never know <laughs> that's true yeah i'm, I'm just trying to yeah, build my clout it. before i do that but yeah yeah who knows man yeah build it up yeah Good luck. I, i'm wishing you luck i believe in you oh, thank you <laughs> yeah, so no problem no problem thank you again for coming on the yeah. show ko you have this has been really really fun um I, I, <laughs> thank I, you I, where can people find you go ahead and plug what uh pl plug yourself what, what, do you, what do you got going on Man, I hate doing this part. Literally, just Google Kogan. <laughs> Google, Google, Google Kogan, and you'll find me. Like, you spell my name correctly. Like, the amount of times I've seen bigger creators still get my name wrong, it, it's insane. I mm. said I actually had a creator got me mixed up with Arthur's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that's not good. But yeah, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, find me on YouTube, and those are the big socials that I'm pushing more than anything else at the moment. Awesome. I'm on Twitch, but I, I'm not going to be streaming much, much on the. Uh, is that a class? Book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was not expecting that. Yeah, you can find me on uh, Twitch, but I'm not streaming as much. But mm -hmm. those are the three social medias I'm using the most. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Thank you again. Thank you to Twitch chat for yeah, being here. No Thank problem. you for, for TikTok chat for being here. Um, Next week, we have another great Chocobo Radio podcast episode. So feel free to uh, tune in. It's going to be on Sunday next week. So um, I hope I can see all of you there. And um, yeah, thanks for being here. And everybody have a good rest of your afternoon, night, whatever. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye, guys. Kogan a huge thank you for coming on the pod this week and supporting small channels. Also, thank you for watching this and supporting me to the end. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe.